Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I have read, or most of the books, some of the books, <laughs> some, that I have read so far in 2022. So I am going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I figured since it is almost July, it is the end of June now, I thought it was about time that I did this before it's a little too late to do the mid-year if it's not mid-year anymore. So anyway, I am so excited to talk to you guys about the books that I have read so far this year, the best, the worst, my most beautiful. I am just so excited and yeah, so without further ado, I'm just going to start answering the tag questions. Please feel free if you would like to. I'm going to put all of the questions in the description if you want to copy and paste and let me know which books you would put in each category. I would love to hear that. So anyway, without further ado, the number one question is your favorite book so far in 2022. The best book I have read so far this year is The One, The Only, The Heartbreaking, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I, I have been broken by this book, but in the best way possible. You should know nothing about this book when you go into it, so I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. All you have to know is that it is incredibly heartbreaking, incredibly devastating, incredibly uplifting in a really devastating way. I don't even know if that makes sense, but it just, the characters, the setting, the idea, the, the whole concept of this book is just brilliant. And the themes that are discussed in it, and I don't wanna to say too much of what the themes are, but just everything about this book is perfect, is beautiful, is brilliant. And I think everybody should read it if you haven't. I know so many people that have read it do love it, and for very good reason. It is just, the, I think, the saddest book I've ever read. But if you guys know me at all, I love sad books, I love tragic books, and I think this is the saddest book I've ever read. Um, Kazuo Ishiguro's writing is just baffling, and I... I could not speak more highly of this book, um, and it is definitely the best book I have read so far in 2022. Number two is the best sequel you have read so far in 2022, and this is actually the only sequel that I have read, but it is, in fact, the best. Um, and that is Louisiana's Way Home by Kate DiCamillo. This is part of her Raimi Nightingale series, which I'm going to be talking about in a little bit, but this is the second book that you don't really have to read them in order, but I would recommend reading them in order. The first book is about these three friends, and we initially read from Raimi Nightingale's perspective. It's third person, but we're following Raimi mainly, and she meets these two girls, Louisiana and Beverly, and Louisiana gets her own book, which is the second, and Beverly gets her own book, which is the third, and this, obviously, I'm considering a sequel, was absolutely wonderful. Like I said, you can read them on their own, but I would recommend reading them in order just because it follows them chronologically, and she refers back to Raimi and Beverly, which you would meet in the first book anyway. And this was just such a beautiful story. When I met Louisiana in Raimi Nightingale, I really loved her character and I wanted to know more about her. And I'm so glad that Kate DiCamillo gave us her own story and the story that takes place after Raimi Nightingale. So I absolutely adored it. I will talk a little bit more about Kate DiCamillo in a little bit. Question three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to, and for me, I'm going to be picking Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I am not a romance reader. I am mainly a classics, literary fiction, and middle grade reader, um, but I have been recently in and out of a slump for the whole of 2022. And because it's the summertime now, I really wanted a summery read. I did start my very first Emily Henry, which I will be talking about in a little bit, but she just came out with Book Lovers and everybody has been raving about it. It is a romance surrounding books and I think that nothing could be more perfect. So that is definitely one that I would like to eventually read. Um, depending on how I feel about the book of hers that I'm currently reading, maybe I'll read it sooner rather than later. Um, but usually with new releases, I tend to let the hype die out a little bit before I read them myself, um, but maybe I will read it 
while the hype is still going on, so we'll see. Number four is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and that has to be The Winners by Frederick Bachman. The Winners is the third and final book in the Beartown series. Beartown and Us Against You are the first two books, and they are two of my all-time favorite books ever, ever, ever. Frederick Bachman is probably my favorite contemporary writer. If you haven't read Beartown, um, I would recommend looking up Triggers, but it is just one of the best books I've ever read, and I can't, I just can't believe that the series is going to end. I'm like so, I'm so nervous about how it's going to end, but so excited at the same time. So I really, really can't wait for it to come out. Number five is the biggest disappointment of 2022, and this one has to go to, unfortunately, Barnaby Rudge by Charles Dickens. I read this for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club that I am a co-host of with Emma, and I just, Dickens as a whole, throughout his earlier works, just has been a bit disappointing because Great Expectations is one of my favorite books absolutely ever. And so going through this book club with Emma, I thought, oh, I can't wait to read more Dickens. I love him so much. I love what he does in A Christmas Carol and Great Expectations. And just all of his books have kind of been letting me down his earlier works. So hopefully that will change once we get to his later works. But unfortunately, I have to give biggest disappointment to Barnaby Rudge. Number six is Biggest Surprise, and that has to go to Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This was my very first Kurt Vonnegut book, and I fell in love with it, and I was not expecting to at all. I knew that I would enjoy it, and I remember hearing so much about it, everybody raving about it, but I didn't really know what it was about. I knew that it was an anti-war novel, but I didn't know too much, so I had no expectations or even slightly low expectations, um, but I read it, I fell in love with it and it is just brilliant. It is amazing and I really, really loved Kurt Vonnegut's writing. It's a mix between comedy and sorrow and it's just one of the most incredible books I've read, just what he does with the narrative, science fiction elements, with the reality. It's just, it's just such a, a fantastic book and definitely a big surprise to me. So excited to keep reading more Kurt Vonnegut after falling in love with Slaughterhouse-Five. Number seven is favorite new author. This could be a debut author or a new to you author. This is neither for me, but I read a lot of her books in 2022 so far, and she's definitely one of my favorite authors, so I figured I would give her a shout out once again, because I feel like I talk about her all the time, but that's okay. And that is Kate DiCamello. So I have a bunch of her books here, but also this is the Raimi Nightingale series that I was talking about. So the first one is Raimi Nightingale, the second one is Louisiana's Way Home, and the third one is Beverly right here. Kate DiGamillo, I first was introduced to her when I was really, really young with her debut novel, Because of Winn Dixie, and then The Tale of Despero, and The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, and The Tiger Rising, and all of her incredible, incredible books. And she is just one of those writers that I so much look up to and aspire to be like um, as a writer of middle grade myself, and she is just a wonderful, wonderful person. I love listening to her interviews, I love listening to her speak, and just everything that she stands for and everything that she says I just love, and everything that she writes. I will read absolutely everything that she writes. So yes, Kate DiCamillo. I definitely think she is one of those writers that you don't have to be in the middle grade bracket. You don't have to be 8 to 12 or 8 to 13 to enjoy her books. I think that they are the kinds of books that are perfect for people of any age, and that is definitely what I love about middle grade, is they really are perfect for any age. So, Katie Camillo. Number eight is newest fictional crush, and that of course has to go to Tommy from Never Let Me Go, especially the movie adaptation with Andrew Garfield playing Tommy. Again, I want to say nothing about it because I just want you to go in blind, but Tommy captured my heart and never let it go. I adore him and I will always adore him and I can't wait to reread this book so that I can be reunited with him, but yes, I just, I love him so, so much. Number nine is newest favorite character. This one 
has to go to Kathy H from Never Let Me Go, played by the beautiful Carrie Mulligan in the movie adaptation. I love her so much, but I just talked about Tommy, so I feel like I want to give another answer. So besides Kathy H, I also want to mention the three girls from the Raimi Nightingale series. We have Raimi, Louisiana, and Beverly. They are just so wonderful. They felt like the friends that you meet at summer camp when I was reading this book, and that's kind of how they meet as well, um, except it's in baton twirling classes for all different reasons, but um, there is so much more to these books than they let on. They're so much deeper, so much more emotive, so much more adult in a way than you would expect from, I guess, the general plot of this book, but it's just all three girls are so wonderful. I fell in love with them and I feel like I really just, I felt like the fourth friend in this friend group of the three girls. I really highly recommend you reading this series because it's just so heartwarming and makes you feel like you're a kid again going to summer camp. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. <laughs> Everyone say it, say it with me. Never let me go. Okay. Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, this book is probably the saddest book I've ever read. I don't think I've cried so hard at a book that I did with Never Let Me Go, so the book that made me cry the most in general and in 2022 has to go to Never Let Me Go. Number 11 is a book that made me happy, and that of course has to go to, like I said earlier, Frederick Bachman. This is his book Anxious People that I read this year. This, what I love, like I said before about Frederick Bachman, is how he combines different emotions and at one instance, this book is really, really funny. In another instance, it is really sad and heartbreaking, and it's also hopeful, and just everything, every emotion that a person can feel, I think Frederick Bachman captures in his books, and especially happiness. I just feel joyful when I read his books, and this book is just it's just so funny and the way that he opens it up I will read to you because you guys will see what I mean did I put the dust jacket on I put the dust jacket on upside down oh my goodness okay okay so this is how the book opens a bank robbery a hostage drama a stairwell full of police officers on their way to storm an apartment it was easy to get to this point much easier than you might think all it took was one single really bad idea. And we have this we have this plot that you'd think is really intense and high stakes and it is about a bank robbery and a hostage drama, but it's so much more than that and it's it's so funny and lighthearted but also deep and just just everything. So anyway, Frederick Bachman makes me incredibly happy no matter what his books are about. So Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Number 12 is the most beautiful book you bought or received this year. My book is a book that I received from the illustrator in my P.O. box, which is just so incredibly special. And this is A World Full of Dickens Stories, Eight Best Loved Classic Tales Retold for Children, written by Angela McAllister and illustrated by Jenny Hansen. I, like I said, was gifted this in my P.O. box from the illustrator, and she even wrote me a personal note and gave me an original illustration of Nell from the old curiosity shop which you can see right here on the cover so I have that illustration the original which is just mind-blowing to me this is just one of the most beautiful books I have ever seen her illustrations are baffling and the amount of detail that is put into this book is just incredible. I'll do a little flip through so that you guys can see, but basically this is a book meant for children, but I think perfect for anybody who loves who loves Dickens. And it just tells you a shorter version of each story and accompanied with the most beautiful illustrations. I love her line work and the texture that she uses. I'm guessing that she uses gouache and colored pencils. And I think the colored pencils is what gives it that great texture, that line work that she creates. And I think it's I think it's the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful books I've ever received and definitely full of some of the most beautiful illustrations that I have ever seen. The most beautiful book definitely has to go to A World Full of Dickens Stories, um, thanks to Janique Hansen. So I love her work and I love this book and I am just 
honored to have received it from her. It, it would be also just as beautiful if I bought it myself, but I think it makes it even more special that she sent it to me. So absolutely adore this book. Number 13 is the last question, and that is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I did put the books that I am currently in the middle of because I definitely want to finish those by the end of the year. The first one is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I am a little less than halfway through. I'm about a quarter of the way through and I'm really enjoying it so far. I wanted a summary read and this does have some kind of role in the story that I'm writing so I wanted to read it and take it in and see how it made me feel as a writer as well as a reader. Um, it's a wonderful story about this family and it's set around this trip to a lighthouse and I'm not too far into it but I love her writing style. Um, so at some points, especially in the beginning, Virginia Woolf can get a bit confusing just for me because of her stream of consciousness writing. So one thing that I love to do is listen to audiobooks as I sight read and it really helps me to comprehend the story and to get a full picture of what's going on and to not get too lost. I'm loving To the Lighthouse and I can't wait to keep reading it so definitely want to finish that before the end of the year. Then I am also in the middle of Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. I started this a few weeks ago and put it to the side because it just wasn't the mood that I was after. That is, this is following William Shakespeare's son, Hamnet, and also his sister and his mother, Hamnet's mother and William Shakespeare's wife. Um, and we aren't following Shakespeare too much, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's just not the vibe that I was after, but I'm really enjoying it. The writing is stunning. The story is so imaginative and beautiful. It doesn't feel like a historical textbook, of course, but it is really interesting to learn more about the background of Shakespeare's family relationship because I feel like you don't really hear too much about it. So really enjoying Hamnet so far, just not really in the perfect mood for it. Um, but I'm sure I will be in the colder months. And then the book that I was talking about earlier by Emily Henry is Beach Read. Now this is the mood that I, that I am after and I have been reading this and loving it. I, like I said, am not really a romance reader, but I kind of want to branch out of my typical genres just because I have been getting a bit bogged down by certain books and I really am just such a big mood reader that I want to lean more into what mood I'm in um, and not try to stick to a specific aesthetic or genre that I think pleases other people. So anyway, I am reading Beach Read because I really wanted a book that I could not put much energy into and that I could feel the summery feeling while reading and just just enjoy a nice, light, quick, romantic read. I'm also really in the mood for romance, um, and this is perfect. So this is about two writers, and they first meet in college, and they both really dislike each other. The main character, January, writes romance novels, happily ever after stories, and the male character, Augustus Everett, writes very deep, dark literary fiction books. And they both meet after college, and it's about them meeting again and also how they are both experience... I'm so sorry if you can hear that. <laughs> My neighbors decided to do landscaping. It sounds like it's quieting down, so I hope you can't hear that. But anyway, this is about them um, experiencing writer's block and how they both make a deal to write in each other's genre. So Augustus Everett has to write a happily ever after romance and January Andrews has to write a dark literary fiction. And I think it's such a, a wonderful and fantastic idea and I'm really enjoying the plot so far. I'm also really into the character dynamics because it is kind of a hate to love trope and that is one of my favorite tropes. But I thought if I'm in the mood for a summer read, what better book than Beach Read? And everybody has been raving about Emily Henry, so I'm loving this so far. Really happy to be reading it. The next book that I need to read by the end of 2022 because I've been putting it off for way too long is Northern Grabby by Jane Austen. My friend Sarah from her YouTube channel Sarah's Prusals and I have been wanting to read this book for like a year and a half, two years maybe, and I am I am the bad one that keeps putting it off because of just different things and but anyway, 
we are making the time, Sarah, if you're watching this, we are reading this book by the end of 2022. You have to hold me to it because last year I didn't read Jane Austen and I like reading at least one Jane Austen every year and I didn't read one last year so I would like to read one this year and I have been really wanting to read Northanger Abbey. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this will be read by the end of 2022. And then the last book, oh actually second to last, but the last one I don't have with me. The second to last book that I want to read by the end of 2022, I'm also thinking in the summertime as well, is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I have been saying in my past few videos that I really want to read East of Eden and I am hoping to get to it this summer. Um, it is quite chunky and with my reading slump I don't know how this will go but I really want to just force myself to read it because I am really in the mood for it. I do want to read his most or one of his most beloved big epics. It's so many people's favorites I just want to read it and love it as well so hopefully I will get to East of Eden this summer. And then the last book that I want to read but I don't have with me I just ordered it yesterday that is My Policeman by Bethany Roberts and this is a book that is being adapted into a movie with Harry Styles as the lead. Make make Harry Styles say anything, be in anything, read any book and I will I will be there. I will I will read it. Um <laughs> and I I just adore adore Harry Styles. I adore you. Um and anyway song reference. Um, <laughs> I have seen the trailer for it and it looks incredible. My Policeman, I believe, is about the relationship between E.M. Forster. I feel like it's based off of E.M. Forster. I kind of want to go into it not knowing too much. All that I know about it is E.M. Forster has something to do with it. It is a male-male romance between a married couple, a man and wife, and a policeman. What? What kind of... <laughs> I really don't know, but I don't want to know too much, and especially with the movie coming out, I really want to get to it soon, um, so that is high on my priority list because I do want to read it before the movie. So anyway, that is it for my mid-year book freakout tag. I have read 46 books so far this year. Um, I would like to get to 100, but that is no pressure for me. I just feel like it's not really about the quantity, it's more about the quality of the books that I'm reading, especially with reading books that make you happy and that you are in the mood for and trying to not force yourself. Um, so yes, I am a big advocate for just reading whatever you want, whenever you want, however many books you want. Um, and I'm really excited to see what other books I'm going to be reading this year. And please feel free to stick around if you want to see the other books that I read in 2022. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Again, let me know what your answers are to all of these questions in a comment. And I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading! <laughs>